Bismillah Rahim. Today I'm going to talk about the development of the male reproductive system. Although the sex of the embryo is determined chromosomally at fertilization, as we know, there's like the gamete from the male and the female, which may contain in the female the X chromosome, whereas in the male could be contained the X or Y chromosomes, and that can determine which is the fertilized ovum will be male or female embryo. Although that is happened, still undifferentiated stage of development initially occurs in both in which the primordial of both male and female genital organ will be present. Depending in the genetic determined sex of the individual, the genetic organs appropriate for that sex will develop while the genital organ for the other sex will be regressed. So if it's going to be male in period, then the female genital organs going to be regressed whereas if it's female the male reproductive system will be regressed. Furthermore, the sex identity is not only confined to the reproductive organs it could be also evident in other anatomical features. We can see there's differences between the male and female animals. Also, there's differences in the physiological and behavioral characteristics between the male and female reproductive system. We'll start talking about the primordia of the germ cells. The internal organ of the reproductive system or reproductive uh, organs or gonads arise from the intermediate mesoderm. If you remember from the last lecture when we talk about the development of the renal system we said in that in the region of the thoracolumbar region there is the uh, there is a formation of the urogenital uh, ridge. As I said that urogenital ridge in the lateral portion, there is the development of the renal system, whereas in the medial portion, there is a formation of the gonadal ridge, which will be future uh, testes or the ovaries. At the beginning of the development of this structure, there is a thickening of this area here which form the genital ridge, whereas in the lateral surface, there's the area of the mesonephros. And we can see here, it start to form the mesonephric tubules. Because if you remember, in the cervical region, there will be the pronephros, whereas in the thoracolumbar region, going to develop the mesonephros. So usually, these gonads, going to be contains the primordial germ cells these germ cells first of all will be detected in the area of the epiplast if you remember early in the development we have the epiplast and the, then we have the hypoplast then the uh, epiplast undergo gastrulation to form the ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm. So these cells, the first of all, the primordial germ cells, first can be detected in the epiplast. Later in the development, these cells are going to migrate through the primitive streak toward the yolk sac and the allantois. And then they are going to migrate from the allantois and the wall of the hind gut to reach to the future gonad. During this struggle, these cells going to undergo several stages of mitosis and all the cells are distant to reach to the level of the genital ridge. If the cells, for example, stay outside the genital ridge, they will go under programmed death, which is the apoptosis. Otherwise, if the cells persist, and this will result in the formation of cancer called teratoma, 
and usually because of these cells persist outside and live and they result in the formation of a cancer and usually these cancer tissues contain teeth skin and hairs and different structure from the body so as I said early in the development cells in the epiblast will migrate toward the yolk then move through the allantois to reach the wall of the hindgut then travel to reach the level of the genital ridge where these cells are going to populate inside the genital ridge as i said these cells undergo mitosis during their migration as I said, these cells are of their site of differentiation with this, the genital ridge. In the moment, the process of migration is by active migration. We can see these cells is traveling in the wall of the hindgut to finally to reach in the genital ridge. However, in the avian species, they migrate through the blood stream. Usually these primordial germ cells can be detected in the genital ridge by day 21 in dogs, 22 in sheep, and in cattle and human by day 28. These germ cells, once they reach the genital ridge, they are going to be surrounded by mesonephric cells. And this structure, the mesonephric cells, with the primordial germ cells in the male we call it the seminiferous core whereas in the female ovaries we call it the primordial follicles so as i said each gonad arises from the gonadal ridge which is the thickening in the intermediate mesoderm and usually this mesoderm the intermediate mesoderm surrounded outside or covered by solamic epithelium both undifferentiated gonads in male and females will both consist of primordial germ cells in addition to the mesodermal cells So you can see here, this is the area of the genital ridge, the future gonad. And we can see here, this is the area of the mesonephric ducts. And we have these tubules. We can see these tubules are going to extend inside the genital ridge. And this will result in formation of three structure. Number one, which is the external gonadal cord number two which you can see here in the middle which is the connecting cord and finally the inter gonadal cords each one of them responsible for formation one structure for example the intragonadal will be responsible for the formation of the seminiferous Cord, whereas the connecting cord that we can see here in the middle were responsible for the formation of the reti testis, whereas the extra gonadal will re result in the formation of the male genital ducts, which include the epididymis and the ductus deferens. We can see here that these tubules, which is the mesonephric tubules with their cell, which is the mesonephric cells, they are extending inside the gonadal ridge and this will result in formation of these structures which we call the seminiferous cord and this is part from the intragonadal and this here the tubule that we can see in the middle which is part of the connecting and finally we have the extra gonadal which are going to responsible for the formation of the efferent ducts as i said the rest 
of the mesonephric duct were responsible for the formation of the male genital duct, which include the epididymis and the ductus deferens. So we'll talk about the differentiation and the maturation of the testes. So as I said at the beginning, we have the migration of the primordial germ cells. Then we can see here that some of these tubules that almost found at the same level of the genital ridge, they are going to grow inside which is part from the mesonephric tubules. Also, the cell that they have is called the mesonephric cells. These cells or cord is called the seminiferous tubules. These tubules going to elongate it and form a U shape, which is similar to horse shoe. Each one of them are called the seminiferous cord. And we can see these cells is connected by the mesonephric cells to the area of the connecting tubules. As I said, these the future ready testes. Inside this cord, we will see that it contains from outside these mesonephric cells and it's surrounded. And in the core of this seminiferous cord, we have the pre-spermatogonia which are the primordial germ cells. So we can see here that these cells migrating, then it will be incorporated into mesonephric tubules, and this will result in the formation of the seminiferous cord. As I said, each one of these seminiferous cord going to elongate and have the U shape, which is the horse shoe shaped, as I said, each one of these seminiferous tubules from outside we have the mesonephric cells, whereas the center and the core only contain the pre-spermatogonia. This cell, the mesonephric cells, is very important because through their hormones will halt and inhibit the further development of the spermatogonia. These cells will be not undergo. Uh, proliferation and differentiation into different stages of the spermatocyte until they reach to the level of the puberty. And we can see here, this is a cord of cells, this is a collection of cells, there is no space. So at this stage, we call them the seminiferous cords, whereas in the level of the puberty, these cords will do change of the seminiferous tubules. Very important, we can see here, we have these mesonephric tubules, which just cranial to the testis, they will undergo atrophy, and the same thing happened to the one that found caudal to the testis. Some remnant can persist, for example, in the cranial pool of the testis, there will be appendix epididymis, whereas in the caudal portion, we have the paradidymis. We can see here, this is the mesonephric duct. This one will persist as a male genital duct. So as I said, the seminiferous tubules become convoluted, we call it tubuli contorti. These mesonephric cells become the Sertoli cells, and these Sertoli cells, as I said, will surround from outside, and in the core, in the middle of this cord, we find the pre-spermatogonium. Later, we have some cells that are going to surround these cords, which is layer of the mesonephric tribe myoid cells, and these cells responsible formation of the smooth muscle around these cord, the seminiferous cord. The mesodermal cells located 
at this level here we'll have mesodermal cells these mesodermal cells are going to differentiate into interstitial lytic cells which responsible for production of the testosterone but these cells will not be active until the animal reach to the level of the puberty as i said at this level here the mesonephric cells going to give rise to tubules of the reticulum. Reti if you remember, the semineferous tubule is a U-shape, and it's going to discharge the spermatozoa, and this sinus is here, which is the reticulum. And these reticulum communicate with the efferent ducts. Very important also structure, you remember we have the solamic epithelium. Also we have a layer of the mesoderm. This layer is going to differentiate into fibrous tissue capsule, which is the tunica albuginea. Now we'll talk about the genital duct. In both male and female, the genital duct form during undifferentiated stage so early in the development we have male and female gonads besides we have also the genital ducts in the male we have the mesonephric ducts which is going to open in the urogenital sinus and also we have the paramesonephric once it started to develop The mesonephric in the male will persist, whereas the paramesonephric going to regress and atrophied. In the male, the mesonephric duct is called the Wolfian duct, whereas in the female, the paramesonephric is called the Mullerian duct. Usually, through hormones, produced by the Sertoli cells, which is the anti mullerian hormone, this hormone will be responsible for the degeneration of the paramesonephric duct. As I said, this mesonephric just cranial to the testis is going to atrophy some remnant, which is the appendix epididymis. Whereas the one that found caudally, again going to atrophy and they will form the para epididymis. Whereas the one we can see here in the middle, the one which is the connecting going to form the reticulum, whereas the one that found outside going to form the efferent ducts. The mesonephric duct was just cranial to the testis, this one here. This one is going. So this, as I said, the one here is going to atrophy. However, from this area, toward the urogenital sinus going to persist as the male genital ducts. The first portion here is going to be elongated and going to form the epididymis, whereas the rest part, the rest of the mesonephric ducts going to acquire the layer of smooth muscle and it's going to change into the ductus difference. So as I said, the first part going to elongate, and this will result in the formation of the epididymis, where the rest going to acquire smooth muscle layers, and this will become the dictus difference. From the distal portion here, this is the mesonephric duct, before they enter the urogenital sinus, there is evagination near their junction with the urogenital sinus. And this evagination 
will be from the right and left going to form this structure which is the seminal vesicles which is part from the male accessory sex gland and usually the primordia of these seminal vesicles appears or observe in the bovine fetus around day 55 of gestation and if you remember from our study before in the renal system we say that definitive urogenital sinus going to form the pelvic and the penile urethra and usually the endoderm malepithelium of the pelvic urethra form outputting at the cranial and caudal end of the pelvic urethra and these buds is called the prostate gland and the caudal one is going to be the bulbo urethra so if you remember this is the bladder and then we have the urethra and as extend into penile urethra at this area here in the cranial portion of the urogenital sinus there is out budding out growth and this will result in the formation of the prostate gland whereas the one that found just caudal inside the pelvic region going to form the bulbo urethra so we have two outgrowth one and two the one that cranial going to be the cranial uh, the prostate gland whereas the second one going to be the bulbo urethral gland now i'm going to talk about the differentiation of the external genitalia as I said during undifferentiated phase of the sexual development in the embryos mesenchymal cells from the primitive streak going to migrate toward the region of the cloacal membrane which is the common for the urogenital system and the anorectal uh, system digestive and the urogenital system so this cloacal membrane mesenchymal cells going to migrate to reach to this level here and this will result in the formation of the cloacal fold this is just before the separation although here it's separated but we consider it like this way so all of this area here is called the cloacal membrane as i said the mesenchymal cells going to migrate from the uh, migrate from the primitive streak and going to populate this area here the proliferation of these cells will result in the elevation this elevation will result in the uh, in the formation of the cloacal fault usually these faults are going to fuse ventrally and once they fuse ventrally they're going to form the structure which is the genital tubercle in the male responsible for the formation of the male penis as I said in the beginning we have only one membrane which is the cloacal membrane and we have the cloacal fold as I said during the uh, development there will be a formation of the septum and that septum is going to divide the anorectal uh, columns from the urogenital sinus and this will result in formation of the anus and also the formation of the urogenital sinus uh, fold as we can see here there will be a membrane which is the remnant of the cloacal membrane in the anus region we call it the anal membrane whereas at the area of the urogenital fold we call it the urogenital membrane at the beginning it will be closed membrane but later this one going to have a break and this will result in that the anal canal will be communicated 
with the uh, and the rectum can communicate with the exterior and the same thing will happen to the urogenital sinus as I said in the ventral portion there's the fusion and the formation of the genital tubercle at this level here the endodermal cell will grow from this area here into the genital tubercle and this will result in the formation of the structure we call it the urethral plate and this is the urethral plates this area here and this is the area of the folds which is the urogenital folds and the groove that we can see inside here which is the urethral groove as I said at this level here we have the mesodermal cells and these mesodermal cells undergo proliferation at the level here as I said we call it the urogenital fold the other name after the mesodermal proliferation we call it the scrotal swelling so again at the, this level here all of this was the cloaca and we have the cloacal membrane when we formed the anorectal septum which is going to divide the urogenital sinus will divide it from the anorectal folds as you can see here there's no more connection between the anus and the urogenital sinus as I said there is mesodermal cell mesenchymal cells going to migrate toward this area here there is the formation of the urogenital folds as I said these folds will fuse ventrally to form the genital tubercle okay and as I said from the urogenital sinus the epithelium will proliferate to the level of the genital tubercle and this will result in the formation of the urethral plate and because of the proliferation of the cells in the periphery they will result in the formation of the uh, urogenital fold and also here at the middle there is the formation of the urethral groove as we can see here further the genital tubercles is going to elongate and grow rapidly into ventrocranial direction as it's grow craniovirally is going to draw with it the urogenital fold all of these fold also will grow in the ventrocranial direction what happened later here we can see this is the urethral plate with the proliferation of the cells these cells the tip of the falls coming together close together at the end they fuse together and this will result in the formation of the penile urethra which will be in the middle of the penis so as I said they originally the fall they are fused together and this will result in the formation of the penile urethra with the closure of the urogenital fold the penile urethra become incorporated in the body of the penis so this structure here is very important because this elongation will result in the formation of the penis and at the middle of this penis we will find our penile urethra However, the urethral plate, you can see here, this is in 
yen will not reach to the tip of the penis we can see reach almost to the level of the glans penis then stop what happened later we can see that there is some ectodermal cell start to proliferate and these proliferation or proliferated cells invaginate into the tip of the penis and usually they fuse at the end with the urethral plate or with the penile urethra later what's going to happen see here this cord of cells because this is a cord of cells going to undergo programmed death and this will result in the formation of a canal this canal at the end is going to meet with the penile urethra so we can see here that the urethra will be patent to the exterior will be open to the exterior so we have here two portions almost to the level of the glans penis is coming from the urethral plate whereas the last opening here is coming through the ectodermal cells which we call it the ectodermal butt now we'll talk about the differentiation also of the external genitalia we can see here this is the one we describe later on this is the urogenital folds if we can see here just the area is ventral to the anus this area here is called the scrotal swelling again at this area here we have the area of the ectoderm and we have some mesodermal cells that migrate through the primitive streak to reach at this level here at the beginning we can see we have two scrotal swelling these will give rise to the scrotal pouch like this then these coming to come close together and then they are going to fuse each one of them in the future they will have one testis and we can see here that the area of the fusion between the right and left scrotal swelling will persist as the scrotal raphe usually the location of the scrotum is different among different uh, domestic species for example in the horse and ruminant the genital swelling migrate cranially and the scrotum is located in the inguinal region so we can find the scrotum in these animals in the inguinal region however in cats and pigs its position ventral to the anus so there's no any migration for the scrotum so if we need to find the testis or testes in the pigs and cat its location is in the subanal region in the dogs the scrotum located in intermediate position between the inguinal region and the anus and this is very important to differentiate between the scrotum of different animals the lo their location where exactly is found we'll talk the about the last thing about the descent of the testis we know that early in the development the testis is developed inside the abdomen but later they have to migrate to the scrotal region this process of the migration of the male gonad from the intra-abdominal to the external extra-abdominal subcutaneous location which is in the inguinal region is called the descent of the testis with the exception of the mammal the testis of vertebrate animal mainly within the abdominal cavity so the other animal rather than the mammals their testis will persist inside the abdominal cavity however in the mammals the testes have to descend toward the scrotal region even among the mammals the process of the testicular descent is subjective to species variations so not 
not all the animals is the same happen for the descent of the testes for example in the elephant for example the testes does not descend to the scrotal region the testes remain within the abdominal cavity uh, other species such as bat moss and hedgehog a red deer the testes are returned within the abdominal cavity during the greater part of the year however they descend to the extra abdominal location only in the breeding season as i said majority of mammals however the testes migrate to the extra abdominal location but in some mammals such as rat mice guinea pig the testes may be temporarily withdrawn into the abdominal cavity as a consequence of sensing dangers so the testes will be in the scrotal region if the animal fears or sense a danger the testes is going to return back to the area of the abdomen usually in those animals which the testes descend to the extra abdominal location temperature two or two four below the core body temperature is required for normal spermatogenesis and if you remember we talked about that that there is uh, a cooling system between the artery which is the testicular artery and testicular vein and this will result in the reduction of the blood supply that coming from the abdomen going to the testis and going to reduce the temperature about two to four degrees below the normal body temperature otherwise if the temperature did not getting lower below like two to four degrees there will be no normal spermatogenesis usually the descent of the testes occur in two stages we have the trans abdominal descent and the second one is the inguino scrotal descent the first one which is the trans abdominal migration or de descent as we know that the testis is developed in the area of the thoracolumbar region okay then the testis have to migrate from the area of the lumbar toward the inguinal ring this migration is called the trans abdominal migration and usually this one occurs due to the rapid growth of the vertebral column and associated structure relative to the position of the gonad so the gonad position will be fixed in the lumbar region however with the growing of the vertebral column and associated structure to more cranial position this will leave the testis in the caudal portion near the inguinal canal the second one of the migration is the inguinoscrotal descent as suggested there is migration from the inguinal region toward the scrotal region it has been suggested that abdominal pressure caused tension on the gavernaculum through the vaginal process and forced the testis to go through the inguinal ring the deep inguinal ring also some mesenchymal cells of the gavernaculum undergo differentiation and this will lead to the formation of the cremaster muscle and this cremaster muscle contribution uh, contribute to the descent through the contraction of this muscle and this will aid in the process of the inguinoscrotal descent then the testes have to passage through the inguinal canal so abdominal pressure lead that the testes will be near the deep inguinal ring then the differentiation of the gavernaculum sum of cells into cremaster muscle also will help in this process the inguinoscrotal descent then there is a passage of the testis through the inguinal canal usually in the cattle it's rapid however in pigs it's very uh, in uh, cattle and pig is rapid however it's slow in the horses Finally, the testes leave the inguinal canal and the gavernaculum is going to regress 
and this will facilitate the descent of the testes into the scrotum. There is a decrease in the gabarculum size, and usually this reduction in the size of the gabarculum mainly due to the reduction in the intracellular fluid content of the gabarculum. So the gabarculum size will be very large. However, during the descending process, will be reduced in size due to the loss in the content of the intracellular fluid. Just here, I want to go back a little bit. So this is the testis, as we can see here, going to descend. As I said in the beginning, the vertebral column to grow more cranially, and this will leave the testis, this region here, and this is called the abdominal transabdominal descent. Then as it's getting closer to here, through the pressure from the abdominal organs, they will get them through the deep inguinal ring. Then it's going to pass through the inguinal canal to reach the scrotum. As I said, there is a reduction. You can see here there's a reduction in the size of the gabarniculum. See here at the beginning the length but at the end there is a reduction in the gabarniculum size. See here we, if you remember we talk about the gabarniculum it's form three ligaments one extend from the testis to the abdidymis which is the proper ligament of the testis then we have the ligament of the tail of the testis and finally outside the vaginal process and which is connected with the scrotum we have the scrotal ligament the last thing i want to talk about which is the cryptorchidism which is the failure of the normal testicular descent so if the testis not able to descend to the scrotum and left inside the abdomen, this process or this condition is called cryptorchidism. It's a condition which only occur in mammals, especially in the mammals that their testes have to descend in the scrotal region. This condition usually occurs in horse, pigs, and a miniature dogs mean here the small size dogs uh, could be occur in one side or bilaterally however bilateral crypto head animal is a sterile cannot produce offspring because there is no normal spermatogenesis however in these animals still they have the phenotypic and behavior characteristic of the entire male. The reason that the interstitial cells, which are responsible for production of the testosterone, are unaffected by the core body temperature. However, for the spermatogenesis, the body temperature should be 2 to 4 degrees below the normal body temperature.